thank you so much for joining me today. Welcome to a very relaxing and very creative tutorial. Today I will show you how to draw a rabbit. It's going to be a very cute little bunny and I will show you all the tips and tricks on how to create the specific look in the fur. Now this tutorial is a follow-up tutorial on that fur video that I posted a few weeks ago. Over there I described in detail how to draw fur to create that very realistic look. And to follow up from that, today I have chosen a grey little rabbit as our subject matter. Please make sure to watch till the end because at the end I will be showing you a really cool trick that I haven't showed on YouTube yet. So make sure to watch the full tutorial not to miss anything. And I also have an announcement as well, guys. Uh, in a few weeks, I'm planning to do a Q&A video because so many of you have asked me about that. And I would like to ask you to post any of the questions that you would like me to go over or maybe topics that you'd like me to talk about under the video. Today, we're going to draw a cute, cute little rabbit. And for that, we would need some graphite materials like your regular graphite pencils, a mechanical pencil, a putty rubber, a regular rubber, and if you have one of those very handy, handy tools, the mechanical eraser, very good to have, and a couple of smudge sticks. I also try to find uh, most of the materials that I use during the tutorial and I add them under the video. So please have a look over there if there is something that you're missing or that you're interested in. It will be very beneficial if you guys get to watch a video that was on how to draw fur because today I'm going to look at all the things that I have taught you and we're going to employ all of these tips and tricks into this rabbit drawing tutorial. Let's start first by structuring an animal and I have a very in-depth um, structuring tutorial where I explain all the ways on how you know best and easiest way to do that on my patreon page but um, here I will just very quickly show you what I'm doing for this particular artwork and that is starting to draw with a simple geometrical shapes as always I use that for drawing and sketching objects as well. So first creating two circles or ovals. I apologize if you can't see really well at this stage because the camera doesn't seem to pick up very very fine lines and I can't go too hard on this at this stage because I'll just ruin my artwork. So yeah, that's what you need to do as well. You need to go really lightly and softly as well. So this is the shape. Then I'm going to start working on other shapes that make out the rabbit, like larger ones, like ears, little legs. So there's a front leg here, a couple of fur folds, and another leg. And now putting in the eyes and the nose and other things. The nose and the mouth. And now I'm going to soften these lines. With this stage now that I'm trying to do the third direction, I'm actually looking over at some of the structural elements as well. So it's not just fur, but also, you know, still checking if the proportions are correct, if I'm happy with them. So adding a bit more definition and more detail. So with these lines, I'm just identifying the growth direction of the fur. 
um, because remember when we did the tutorial on just drawing fur, we sort of just focused on one direction because it wasn't really an animal, it was just, you know, just a fur drawing. So for this one, you need to pay attention because it's a small animal and different parts of the fur are growing in different directions. If you are working on an animal that has spots, at this stage you can mark those through as well. Like for example, if it's a fluffy kitten or something like that, you can identify those darker and lighter areas. At this stage, I have marked all the fur as well. We can mark a little bit of the shadow. I'm not going to do the background for this sketch. So we can just add a little bit if you you know if you want to just to ground it up. But we can do that later as well. Doesn't have to be done now. And I'm going to start shading with a bit more detail. So now I'm gonna start creating that softness and that fur direction, so making it look a little bit more realistic. I will add this sketch at this stage onto my Patreon page. So those of you who are my patrons, guys, look out for that. This would be just something that might make it a little bit easier for you to work on. You can print it out and, and so on. Now I'm going to start working in a bit more detail. I will start with the top and then work my way down just to make it a little bit easier in terms of smudging it, but I will be telling you more as I go along. So one of the darkest areas that I will start working with is here, around the ear. So I'm just going to shade that in quite dark and then I can use that as my point of reference. And same with the eye. Okay, now this is as far as my 3B pencil pretty much goes. I'm going to use a darker 8B pencil. So these are the areas that I'm going to go as dark as I possibly can just because it's the darkest spot on the drawing. Next, I'm going to go into the lighter pencil. So I'm going to go back for my B3 and carry on with little strokes and things. Already in quite a light sort of a way. If you see longer first strands, then you need to make sure that you um, create these longer marks with your pencil. And if you've got short fur, like for example here around the eyes it's a little bit shorter, then make sure that you use shorter pencil strokes as well. If it's a little bit darker in a certain area, you can darken that too. So you see now on the head of the rabbit, I've already built up some of the color, some of the direction. Uh, if you are just going for a very quick little sketch, you can stop at that stage, you know, and move on to the rest of the body. I am going to stop here for now, go back onto the ears and then carry on um, working on the whole body as well. So the direction of the fur here on the ears is kind of going down, facing down. So just make sure that you use downward strokes and also the fur is not too, too long. So even if you are making large strokes, make sure you break them up. I was little ones and I was showing you guys in the video where I showed you how to draw fur. So make sure to watch that one 
and how to give that sort of a natural direction to the fur growth. So you can see this is what I'm doing here as well. Kind of going in the similar direction but varying it a little bit otherwise it will just look like straight lines. And the same on this ear as well. Okay, so now I'm going to leave this for now and move on to the body and then come back to the head. Feel free to turn your drawing around to make it a little bit easier for your hand to draw if you want. Here where the fur changes direction and you can kind of see it going from one direction to another slowly, you pretty much apply one direction and then you move it around and you apply a different direction and that way you get that really slow transition from one to the other see like it is here now let's add a little bit of the shadow later on we'll be able to make it darker okay so next step is smudging. For this we can use a smudging tool. Again I have a video on all the graphite materials available as well. So you can watch this if you don't know what these things are. Um, but if you're drawing you probably already do. At least have seen them on videos and things like that. So what I would start to work with would be just some smudging. And at this stage I'm going to be smudging going along with the fur. It's kind of like, imagine if there was a real cute little rabbit like this sitting in front of you, what would you do? You would brush it like this, wouldn't you? And that's all you need to do with this. So you brush it along the fur growth, so that way you are not irritating the little rabbit. And that's pretty much all you need to do now. So if you're unsure, do I go like this, do I go like this? Just go the way you would you would actually touch the rabbit if it was sitting in front of you. So if you were to brush it here like that. Maybe you might want to touch its nose a little bit. They do have very cute noses, don't they? Sweet little rabbits. Can give it that extra little smudge on those dark areas as well just to merge that shadow and then on the body the same thing going in the direction of the fur growth here. You know that thickness of the ear, so as it goes down it stops catching light, so you can see that the shadow is formed there. So at this stage it looks kind of like a rabbit but it has that very sort of immature-ish kind of a look to it. And the reason for that is that we haven't done any kind of details, any kind of highlights or anything like this. This is just the first layer that you need to do, like a prep layer, you know. Um, so don't expect, if you're at this stage and you're looking at it and you're going, but my rabbit doesn't look good, it looks a bit flat. Don't worry, you just need to keep working. 
one of the very common things that I see with, with students um, in general and some, some of my students who are new as well is that they work and then they feel like it's not turning out and they're ready to throw that artwork away and start a new one and the same exact thing happens with the new one you cannot expect your artwork after 5-10 minutes to look like something that you have been working on for 5 hours for example on so same thing with anything you know you don't say for example start making a garment and cut up pieces of fabric and then get absolutely devastating that it doesn't look anything like the dress you throw them away and you start again it's sort of funny when you think about it in that way or same with for example if you're cooking right imagine you've got your eggs and your butter and flour and you know whatever else you need for the recipe you mix the dough and then you're unhappy because it doesn't look like the baked cake it's not the time for it to look like the finished product there are still few steps you need to take so please 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 if you're ever drawing especially when you're not doing the follow along but when you are working on your own stuff please make sure that you don't just discard your artworks just because they're halfway finished now i'm going to go for thinner pencil a mechanical pencil and i'm also going to um, get a piece of paper um, just a thin paper to put it under i usually like to use white one but i can't find the piece that i usually use so i have this one lying around okay so what this would do is that would stop me from smudging and now because this is so fine it is allowing me to create all of these little strokes without having to worry about sharpening my pencil all the time it's a very common question that i get asked do i need to use a mechanical pencil when i'm drawing um you know can i get away not using it of course you can there are lots of different schools you know drawing schools that actually forbid you using them the only thing is that if you're just using your normal sort of a pencil like this you would have to sharpen it all the time so you will take longer to complete your drawing because you're constantly interrupting yourself uh, with having to do that little chore but if you're not if you're using something like that then you can get away with just keep going and going really like for example by now if i wanted a really really sharp point I would probably have to do something with my pencil if I was using a regular one. But with this one I can just carry on. By the way, with these pencils you can get different thickness as well, thickness lead. So for example, this one 0.7 it's reasonably wide another common one is 0.5 um, so these are the most common but you can get thinner and you can get thicker so look out for those in your art store or stationery store i love how this cute little rabbit has this fur almost like a fur wall going out like this it is so cute it makes its head look enormous and very cute so make sure that you're going with the direction of the fur and then the fur on the nose is quite short so I'm going to use short little strokes as well so it's very important guys you know if you want to create the realistic look you need to make sure that you follow what you see of course having an actual rabbit would have been ideal then you can not only see it but you can also sort of touch it as well and get a really good feel for it but I don't have a rabbit I don't even know who I can borrow one from so <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to use the photograph so see compared to the first layer this time I'm going much more in detail still it's still far away from being you know the look giving me the look that I want in my end product but as I said you have to build it up 
you can't just expect it to just turn out perfectly with one layer and that's another very common um, misconception as well people when people think of layering an artwork they think of using paint like oil paint or acrylics but really you can work in layers with any medium anything charcoal pastel soft pastel uh, water mixable pencils pastels you know anything anything you might want to use a pen even just a usual pen or a special drawing sort of pen ink pens layering gives you the ability to try things out so if i go lightly over the fur for example like this and then i just think something's not right about it i can erase it and go over again or even if i can't erase it i can perhaps correct it with my next layers um, so it's sort of like giving you a vision of what at the end you might achieve, you know, if you keep working on that. But if you go straight on, hard out, everything, just grab the darkest pencil and go for it, you might not necessarily like what you've got and you will have no way of fixing it or improving it. You might also go too dark on some areas without realizing it and then it can be a bit harder to remove that darkness compared to for example some other uh, materials where you know like this you still can so yeah that's why layering is always a good idea at least that's what i think i'm sure there'll be lots of people who would disagree actually if you draw or paint please comment down below what you think of layering techniques and do you employ them and if you do, what are your favorite medium to use it with? Or do you use a lot of layering with watercolor? Or uh, is it mainly the pencil drawings? Or what it is? I'll be really interested to know what you guys think. So see here I'm going over and over and over again. Just to make this a little bit darker. Because it's quite a dark sort of area that's in a bit of a shadow. Now I'm already paying attention to not just fur direction, but also to um, the shadows that are happening as well there. So like for example this little bit of the ears catching a little bit more shadow. So I'm adding some shadow here as well. Just going over a bit more than say I did over there. Adding a bit of shadow just above there as well. At this stage I'm only working with the pencils, I'm not using erasers uh, just now, I will be doing that a bit later. I think this little patch almost looks like um, a guinea pig. We used to have guinea pigs at some stage when I was much younger and I lived with my parents. But we had unfortunate accidents where they would be killed by like the neighbor's cat, which was really sad, so we had to give them away at the end. They were very cute, and they were in this cage. I still don't know how the cat could possibly get its paws in through. It's not... I don't know. It's just really weird. Okay, so I see here where the fur is quite short. I'm using short little strokes as well. So there, and then that bottom lip there, it's really fluffy, so... I'm just going to add some wild crazy fur and start on the shadows on the bottom here. If you are enjoying this video, make sure to go and check out my Patreon page. Because there, for just $2 a month, you will be able to support this channel. And starting from $8, you will be able to see all the extra videos, tutorials, relaxing follow-alongs. There are also other perks like going in the drawer to win my artworks, one-on-one -on -one consultations with me, 
and so on. So don't forget to check it out. You might find something very, very interesting for yourself over there. Okay, so at this stage, I think it will be beneficial for me to bring the work up a little bit so that you get less of the reflections since the layers are already being built up. So just adding more of the layering. For some darker areas, I already switch over to the darker pencil so that the work can go a bit faster because I also know these areas would need to go even darker. So for this stage, it's fine to go something like this. Okay, so now I am going to smudge everything again. So the same thing that we did with the one first layer. So now this is the second layer, so I'm going over it again. With the smudge stick. And remember, we don't want to use smudge stick to smudge everything out of control to get a very, very sort of a uniform color. We don't need to do that. We've been working very hard on creating the fur texture to go and smudge everything. So make sure that you go very lightly, again, like you would if you were patting a little rabbit. Okay, so now I'm going to go over with the third layer and then I will start using eraser to bring out some highlights and things like that. So for the third layer, I'm actually going to use my really dark pencil, but I'll have to sharpen it. I don't think you can find 8B pencils, uh, lead for pencils like this, mechanical pencils. Um, just because they would be so breakable and so uneasy to work with, I guess. So I'm just going to have to go and sharpen this one really well. Okay, so now that I've sharpened this, we can get into more details, like the dark little bits of fur. And very, very, very important, guys, when you're drawing, make sure that you use same fur direction, same strokes as well. If here by the eye I can see fur that kind of is sort of going like that, looping around a little bit, then that's what you need to do. So if you're drawing an animal, like maybe you're following along with me now, but when you are drawing on your own, just remember, these things are very important, so rather than just blocking everything, make sure that you loop around, if it loops, make sure that it's short little strokes or long strokes. That's the only way you would get that feel of that particular fur. And of course, always, always keep your tones, um, your values, in English it's called values, um, in mind. So if you've got shadows and you can make darker strokes. So just around the nose, the fur is very, very um, dense, fluffy, 
but it's also parted a little bit um, because of the whiskers so make sure that you you know add those a little shadows in there that sort of a uh, carry that information across because when you're drawing all you're trying to do is you're trying to with darker and lighter areas you're trying to uh, carry across the information that you see you know with your eyes and not just your eyes you know because when you're an artist that's why i think photorealism sort of i don't think it's the you know the aim that everyone should aim for just because it's just a copy of a photo but when you've got a real object in front of you or when you're working from a photograph but you're remembering what the real subject or object is it, you bring an emotion into it as well like for example you remember what it smelled like if you're for example drawing or painting a rose you remember the texture when you touch that as well so of course visual is the main thing here but it's more than the visual you know it's the feeling that you got from that object you know was it fluffy and fuzzy was it angular and sharp you know it's those sort of sensations that you need to bring into your work and then it will be much more original you will be able to create really interesting things of course i understand learning techniques and things like that that's important because you want to be able to carry that information that you want through your art across and you don't want to be stopped by i'd love to do this but i don't know how to start you know those kind of things oh that looks too hard those things are not good so it means you need to to train yourself to you know work more but just trying to do a perfect photo you know so that your drawing is just like a photo you can do this while you're training while you're getting your skill but as i said it, this should not be your final goal you know i want to draw as good as the photos this is not that's not what you want to aim for because photos are flat photos are, they're good as photos but you don't need to make them into an artwork you know what i mean okay so just adding more of the darker first and you see here now i'm starting to get more into that sort of a single here it's textures and things like that Okay, so now that I've done the third layer sketching, I'm going to go and soften it up as well. And just like before, I'm not trying to, you know, um, smudge everything into oblivion. I still want some of those lines to be visible. to do is I'm going to take one of the smaller smudge sticks and I'm going to go in for the sort of a more how would I put it very sectional smudging so rather than just smudging softening everything I'm just going to go and soften some of the strands now why you would want to do that is because it sort of gives because you know when you're not just drawing a patch of fur when you're drawing an animal there are lots of those sort of a darker and lighter sections more like strands so this is this is something that would really help you with that You see what I mean? You can create these sections almost like strands by just softening some of the areas. It can be very useful as well when you're drawing human hair as well. This area here is a little bit softer and darker at the same time, so. That's what we're trying to achieve here.
Okay, next step is using an eraser. I'm using a putty eraser. Um, again, it's very useful because you can shape it and you can create very thin edges and so on. But if you watch my videos, you probably already know it because <laughs> I pretty much almost always use it in my drawing um, tutorials. So what I'm doing now is I'm going for those larger areas, but still quite small, you know, so that they're not not too large, but some of the some of the areas of the fur that are a little bit lighter. And rather than just by lightening the whole area, but using this technique, I'm also creating fur, some fur texture. And you see how instantly it makes it so much more three-dimensional and so much fluffy, you know, it's that texture that I'm going for. So anywhere where you see it being a little bit lighter than what you've got it there, you go in with your putty rubber. Because fur here goes in different directions, I am doing the same, exactly the same thing with the, with the eraser as well, so I'm just going in different directions. Okay, so at this stage I'm going to um, already go in with my fine eraser and add some little highlights. Highlight in the eye and then Just like we did with a pencil, now we're going with the eraser. Now and then you can clean the eraser because this is like a regular eraser. It's not like a putty rubber where, you know, it just absorbs the graphite. This one sort of it sits on the surface so you can clean it up now and then okay and while you're going there might be some areas that because remember this eraser removes everything back to paper unless the paper is damaged by too much sort of overworking it so if you want something to retain its shape but it's too light for your liking you can always go over what you've done with the smudge stick and soften it a little bit now let's look at the top of the head and now going back with the fine pencil to add some more definition over the over the some of the erased bits I'm gonna go for a thinner pencil and now back to this This is why it's important to place the shadow before you get into this because now we can mark the light fur that is going over the ground like that and now back to dark pencil 8b I'm 
So we're constantly creating this contrast by using items or materials that can bring light into the work. And the same thing with dark. So see now I'm going to be constantly changing things out because now I'm going to be finalizing some of the smaller details. So there are some little fur bits that go over the eye. So I'm just going to clean those up. So with the 8B I'm going only over the really dark areas and then I'm going to use the other pencils for some semi-dark patches. And you know how in the beginning we were going all over just to cover the largest areas as quickly as possible. Now you really want to take your time. And this is the time when you might like to, you know, really look into the texture and the fur direction. You know, those tiny little things that you can see. Now I'm going to go in for some sort of a middle of the road texture that's not too dark but not too light. Again, as I see a dark spot, I go back to my 8B pencil. Now, to finalize and soften everything, but not too much, um, I'm not going to use a smudge stick, I'm going to use instead a brush. Um, now, what the brush is good for is that it doesn't smudge everything, um, you know, to where you can see the smudge marks. It sort of softens, it kind of softens the darkest areas and it softens the highlights as well. You can use um, makeup brushes, you know, the ones that I don't know if those of you who buy makeup sometimes you can purchase a product and there'd be a brush that's included it's sort of it's not very good it's in the middle of the road but it will be perfect for things like that so stop doing makeup start doing drawings <laughs> because it sort of softened all your highlights that allows you to go back in again and add those really really strong strong really bright highlights like the ones Here. Just a bit more texture. And you see how with every layer little strokes become smaller and more and more detailed? And that's because you go into finer and finer detail with every layer. And see this is what I'm talking about. You can really go into the highlights now there we have our little rabbit that's already coming together so you can definitely see what the work is going to be like okay now that it's getting very very close to being finished we need to look at some really finalized sort of detail. Now these details are the ones that you would do right at the end. So like little things like that, you know, defining little fairy areas. And also um, things like whiskers, for example. So adding 
some of those furry areas that are a little bit unusual for the rest of the composition but before we do this you need to make sure that the areas that are around your animal are nice and clean a little whiskers are sort of from above the nose Now you see the reason why we want to leave this till the end is you saw how much smudging we were doing. This is something you don't want to be smudging. Obviously you want them to be very nice and clean. And this is the time to do all the final touches, you know, some final shadows, some final textures, anything you want to refine, anything that you were waiting to get to a certain stage to add. So these are all the things you need to sort of tidy up now. You can still use a razor at the same time and the pencil. This would be a very individual thing because everyone sort of works in a different way and a different pace. And even though this is just a tutorial, this is not a finished work or anything like this, you know, it's just for the purpose of showing you guys how to do a little rabbit and giving you a, another exercise on how to draw fur. I still want this to look quite nice because I do give them away on Patreon um, in a lucky draw. So every month my patrons um, who are in a specific um, tier for that go in the draw and they get, you know, they get a chance every month to win uh, one of the sketches that I'm creating here. So just for the sake of having it nicely finished. For that purpose what I want to do is I want to work a little bit more on the ground so for that I'm just going to carry that through just a bit out of you know that area of and so what I'm going to do now I'm just going to Create a little bit of texture and also add little stones as well. So now for this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of texture as I said before. It's nothing very hard or anything like this. It is just a matter of literally adding a little bit of texture like that and then giving it a nice smudge and some smudging in between and also deepening some of the shadows that's if you need to your shadows might be deep enough just depends I'm just going to extend them a little bit through here and I'm also going to make some of them darker like the ones that are right next to the feet. It doesn't have to be complicated or anything like this, it's just a little bit of the shadow that is being cast by the rabbit's paws. Now I'm gonna go in with an eraser We can create a little bit of texture with the eraser as well. And soften it up. And now guys, the secret trick part. And that is 
when you are using an eraser you can erase to a certain degree but there are still some areas that stay a little bit gray so what i can suggest is that you can actually get a white pen like this one um, i will try and find links for all of these things to put them under the video for you guys and what you can do but i suggest that you do it only in small areas you don't go over the whole thing otherwise it becomes a mixed media rather than a graphite drawing so what you can do is you can just add little tiny hairs in some small areas you know where you want them to be really really bright and very very small and very precise tiny little spots especially where you want to create little tiny little details over the really dark surfaces okay so things like that can be really helpful also for things like white whiskers for instance okay these things are quite hard to create with the eraser so i'd say you can go for something like that just make sure that the trick with the pen should be done only at the end so when you know you're not going to go back in with erasers pencils rubbers or anything like this finally the finished work and i hope you guys have enjoyed watching this and please 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 give it a go and if you don't want to follow along to the whole thing maybe you might use some of the techniques that i showed you here in your own art when you're doing your own animal sketching or anything furry for that matter i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope it brought you more relaxation and it gave you an outlet for your energy to come out in creative ways. In today's world, it's probably more important than ever before to find that outlet where you can let yourself breathe, where you can stop thinking about everyday situations and just go into the zone, into the safe space where you can just create and not think about anything else except for the marks that your pencil is making on the paper. If that is your thing, don't forget to sign up for more content like this. And give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I also would like to take this chance to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons who are already supporting this channel and getting to view all the extra videos as well. So don't forget to check it out if you haven't done that so far. And guys, as always, I hope you have a great, great day. And thank you so much for drawing with me.